Rossi here, up in fabulous, beautiful, desolate, and ultra-remote northern Nevada. I actually just finished visiting a friend who's caretaking at the Fly Geyser Ranch, which is a private ranch owned by the Burning Man organization. They bought this property uh, right over yonder with an amazing, beautiful, multicolored geyser and this amazing hot spring and you can only soak in that hot spring if you're invited to stay on the ranch by someone who happens to be working there so i was really lucky to have a good friend who was caretaking she invited me to spend the night i soaked in the hot spring unfortunately you're not allowed to shoot any photos or video at fly geyser ranch but <sighs> let me tell you something that was one of the best hot springs i've ever been in i mean you can't see anything from here i've already driven several miles from the ranch but it's it's out there on the edge of that little dry lake bed, which I found out they call 96 because that little playa there is where they had the very first Burning Man out here. <laughs> okay, if you know anything about the Burning Man Festival, it started in San Francisco. Guy built an effigy, burned it on Baker Beach, had a party, had a great time, did that for about 10 years. Then too many people started coming, so they moved the party out here to the desert. And that little playa there is where they had the very first desert. Burning Man. And now the organization that started the Burning Man Festival owns the property right around the end of it there. And that's where the hot spring is. I'll zoom in again. But oh gosh, you really can't see anything. And like I said, you're not allowed to take any photos or video. So, well, I'll just have to describe this hot spring to you. It was a huge pond surrounded by these kind of high desert grasses and scrubby landscape all around it. But the pond was really hot. Uh, I don't know how hot it was, maybe 103. It was pretty good, 103, 104. For a pond that size, very remarkable in my experience. And I've been to over 100 hot springs. Out of all the hot springs I've been to, I have to say that that was definitely, if not the best, one of the best, just because it was so big and so hot and so clear. So we had a wonderful time soaking. Uh, I got here yesterday afternoon. We soaked at sunset. We went back and soaked under the stars. And then we went back this morning and soaked again at sunrise. But unfortunately, well, my friend who was caretaking, she had to leave. And unfortunately, now I have to leave. I got to head back down towards Death Valley and get back to work. But while I'm up here anyway, I thought it might be interesting to stop at the site of this year's Burning Man Festival. Okay, that playa there is where they had it in 96, but I guess it got, mm, I'm not sure why they moved it to this other playa. I think because that was on private land and they had to pay the guy rent. Started getting bigger and bigger. They moved down the way here. There's an even bigger playa that's uh, BLM land. And so they were able to get a permit from the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. And that's where they've been throwing the Burning Man Festival for the past mm, 20, 25 years. So this past... Well, I'm shooting this video on October 13th. So about one month ago, the 2022 Burning Man just ended. So I thought it would be interesting to go to the site where Burning Man was just a month ago and see for ourselves if they cleaned up the mess. Because I've seen other YouTubers, and I won't mention any names, make videos talking about how Burning Man destroys the playa and leaves this huge mess behind. And well, it's all very clickbaity and it's all completely fake news because say what you will about Burning Man. And uh, I certainly have said my share of nasty things about Burning Man. They do take cleaning up very seriously. Uh, if they didn't, they wouldn't continue to get their permit renewed every year from the Bureau of Land Management. So what a lot of people don't realize is after the festival itself ends on Labor Day, well, they have crews of people that stay out here for months afterwards, cleaning up literally with rakes and fine tooth combs, picking up every last sequin, feather, sparkle, piece of rebar, every last piece of garbage is supposedly removed from the playa by... Well, they just finished the, uh, well, they call it Resto. It's short for restoration. They just finished that on October 7th, which was six days ago. So about a week ago, they finally finished the cleanup. I'm going to get in my car here and drive on over and see for myself just how good a job they did.
Okay, we're out on the playa. And well, the first thing you notice is you can see that the playa surface has definitely been disturbed by a lot of vehicles and there's been a lot of water on it. You can see that by these little cracks that indicates that it's been wet. And those are direct consequences of the Burning Man event because they've had big trucks coming in and out of here for the last month, carrying stuff out, carrying stuff in. You know, they wet the roads down to keep uh, the dust from getting out of control. And they do use all their own water from the ranch I stayed at last night. They have a huge aquifer there. They use that water to keep everything nice and moist so it doesn't get too dusty. So that's why you see these uh, little cracks in the playa surface. But you know, that's natural. That'll uh, just dissipate with a few good wind storms. It'll be back to, well, being smooth as a baby's butt. But I'm gonna drive a little bit farther out. Uh, I just came into the playa on the 12 mile entrance. There's a few different ways you can get onto this playa. Uh, when you go to the Burning Man Festival, you enter through the eight mile entrance, which is four miles down the road. Uh, but then you have to wait in line. You have to drive quite a ways to get to the gate. And so I feel like you're actually probably closer to the 12 mile entrance by the time you get to the event. So I'm going to look on Google Maps and see where I think somebody plots out the city every year. So it's probably on there. I'm going to see if I can pinpoint the exact location where the event was this year and drive out there and see if I can find any garbage or well, they call it moop, M-O-O-P, stands for matter out of place. And Burning Man is very strict about picking up every last little bit of moop. So I'm gonna drive out there and see if I can find one single solitary piece of moop they missed. Okay, I was able to look up the exact GPS coordinates where they placed what they call the Golden Spike, which is the spike they drive in what's going to be the geographic center of the Burning Man Festival every year. So I found the coordinates for that exact spot uh, this past 2022, and I'm gonna head to that and see what I can see. Looks like there's still a little bit of infrastructure left out here. There's like a light post. There's some kind of bulldozer or grader over there. There's one lonely porta potty. Let's go check that out. <laughs> it's kind of funny because the porta potties are notoriously the worst part about Burning Man. I'm just curious how these uh, resto porta potties hold up. And if I'm going in, well, by gum, you have to go in too. Let's see together. Oh, it's very clean. Much cleaner than the porta potties were at the actual festival. Still not something I want to get in right now. Okay, let's keep going to the Golden Spike. Okay, according to the official Burning Man website, and according to Google Maps, right here is where they place the Golden Spike, which I think it's the central point, like Burning Man is laid out in a circle around it basically, and I think that's the point where they build the man that they burn. So, there was a huge fire here about a month ago, and well, you would never even know looking at the ground. I mean, yeah, there's tire tracks and the ground has obviously been disturbed, but you would never know that a giant wooden effigy was set on fire here, or that there were hundreds of flashing, blinking, fur-covered art cars gathered around it with 80,000 people zonked out of their gourds, dancing and partying right here, <laughs> only a little over a month ago. It's pretty impressive. Uh-oh. What's this? Is this moop? Oh, yep. Yeah. Sorry about the shadow on it, but there is a piece of a, looks like a piece of an egg crate. Now, I can't say for sure that the Burning Man organization was responsible for this. Because uh, other people do come out here and camp. I mean, this is public lands. People come out here and drive around because you can drive as fast as you want. That's the most liberating thing about coming here after Burning Man is over. You know, during Burning Man, you're only allowed to go five miles an hour because they want to try to keep the dust down. Well, I can drive as fast as I want while I'm out here now, and it feels really good. Uh-oh, here's another piece of garbage. Look at that. Again, uh, I can't say for sure that this was left over by anyone having anything to do with Burning Man, because it also gets real windy out here, so this little piece of paper could have blown in from anywhere. And during the Burning Man Festival, this entire playa is not blocked off. I mean, most of it is, like the for the festival. Oh gosh, I don't know how many square miles of it they uh, get for their permit, but that's all uh, a no-go zone. No one is allowed out there unless you have a ticket to the festival. So you can't come camp, you can't come drive within that whole exclusion zone. And that exclusion zone, I think it starts 
in late July when they start setting up and put the golden spike. And it goes all the way until, well, last, uh, last week when they finish the, the rest of the cleanup. So the whole playa isn't blocked off. You can still camp like way up there during burning, man, if you wanted to. So this stuff could, could have come from somebody who was camped outside the official festival. So I don't know, looking around, it looks pretty dang clean to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this moop I found in my car. I'll take it home and throw it away on my way home. Anyway, these guys do a very thorough job of cleaning up. As you can see for yourself, right here, this is not fake news. I'm not editing this in any weird way. I'm really here on the Black Rock Playa on October 13th, 2022. And this is what it looks like. I mean, yeah, the surface is a little beat up from all those aforementioned blinking fur-covered art cars and the aforementioned 80,000 weirdos zonked out of their minds on who knows what. But you'd have to be pretty crusty to quibble with the cleanup job that they did, in my opinion. Leave no trace is one of the main uh, principles of Burning Man. If you're really hardcore into the Burning Man cult, <laughs> it's kind of like a cult, they have the 10 principles. You know, like Christians have the 10 commandments. Well, burners have the 10 principles and it's like radical self-reliance. You gotta be able to take care of yourself and radical inclusion. You gotta not leave anybody out. Well, leave no trace is one of the 10 principles. It's very important to most serious burners. And so they, well, you can see for yourself, they do take it very seriously here. They have basically left no trace. I mean, there's nothing out here, nothing whatsoever to indicate that a city of 80,000 people existed right here only a month ago. I mean, I don't know about you, but I actually do think that's pretty impressive. 80,000 people lived here for a week. A lot of people were out here longer than a week. I was there for 10 days. Many people were there for months. You know, the cleanup crew that stayed afterward was here until last week. You know, so all those people lived out here for all that time and they cleaned up everything. And if that doesn't give you some faith in humanity, well, I don't know what would. <laughs> you know, I heard a song the other day. I was driving out here listening to a, an artist named Todd Snyder. Someone just turned me on to this guy, Todd Snyder. And he had this one lyric in one of his songs where he said he was caught between hope and doubt. And I thought to myself, wow. That pretty much describes me to a T. Because I do, I, I'm an optimist. I like to think the best of people and I think that people are really, at the base of things, good. People are generally good and they will help you out. And that's been the case for me. It's what I found in all my travels. But I'm also a cynic and so every now and then I go, yeah, but, <laughs> like when it comes to Burning Man. Sure, they got the 10 principles. And yes, there's all these people out here cleaning up with rakes at every last little bit and piece all the way till October 7th. But then there's all these other douchebags that come in here and they go to the party, they strap all their crap on the car to leave on the last day and they don't do a very good job strapping it on. And so as they're driving down this lonely desert highway to go back to Reno and wherever else they came from, bags of trash are falling off the sides. The RVs are breaking down, tires are blowing up. So yes, if you come out here immediately after Burning Man, like in the week following, it's pretty gross. There's a lot of trash along that highway. And that's probably what that other YouTube channel was filming when they came up here and made their expose about how gross Burning Man is. But if you're patient and you come back a month later after they've finished the entire process of cleaning up, well, I think you might find that burners aren't so bad after all. You know, this experience is maybe making me lean a little closer. Maybe it's moving my personal needle a little farther away from doubt and a little closer towards hope. Uh, unfortunately, my gas needle is moving a little closer towards E and a little farther away from F. So I guess I better get on the road and go get some gas. And well, I gotta drive all the way back to Death Valley and it's like a nine hour drive and it's already Oh my gosh, it's already 11.30. I gotta go. But before I leave, well, there's one more thing I have to do. And that is, I gotta take a whiz. 
and I'm sure not driving all the way back to that one lonely porta potty. No siree, I'm just gonna pop a squat right here on the playa because I can. <laughs> now you might wonder what's the big deal about taking a whiz on the playa? Well, they don't let you do that at the Burning Man Festival. It's a big, huge no-no. A matter of fact, I think the BLM rangers that patrol the Burning Man Festival can ticket you, issue you a citation if they catch you peeing or, God forbid, pooping on the playa. Now, I would never be so gross as to poop on the playa. You know, you can't dig a hole in this. It's way too hard. So I'm not going to do that, but, you know, taking a whiz, it's just water. And, you know, I, I, sometimes when I'm at Burning Man and I really have to pee and there's no porta potties around, I go, golly, why won't they just let me piss on the playa already? And, you know, it's just water. It's just going to dry up right away. But I do understand why they have that uh, prohibition. And that's because there's 80,000 people up here. If 80,000 people were doing it, well, it'd be a pretty disgusting, muddy mess in no time. But just one person doing it isn't going to make that big of a difference. Right. I mean, at the very least, it saves me from having to go in some janky gas station bathroom farther down the road as I make my way back to Death Valley.